Well, that's it. The last debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump is now over and we are in the home stretch. There is less than two weeks until the election. And did this debate move the needle in any direction? To that, I say probably not. Probably not. This debate, thankfully, was much better than the last debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Um, and I will say that um, the moderator did a pretty good job. I don't like that she framed almost every single question in this right wing manner, but I think that in terms of control, uh, she did what she needed to do. Um, and I will say the biggest thing that stood out to me is that Donald Trump was much more calm this time. He was much more restrained and, you know, he didn't go full Trump like he did in that last debate. In fact, in that last debate, he went full Trump and then he turned it up to overdrive, which it turned off a lot of people. So now we know for sure that him huffing and puffing about how he knows he just dominated that last debate, he knows he lost. Otherwise, he wouldn't have changed his strategy because he definitely did change his strategy. He was much more composed. He wanted to come off as a leader. And I think that he definitely didn't turn off as much people. I don't think he did damage. So he kind of had to walk that fine line and I think that he he did to an extent, but overall, um, what he really needed, as I stated in my debate preview, was just to obliterate Joe Biden. He needed not just a good performance himself, a dominant performance, where you keep Joe Biden on the defensive for the majority of the debate, but he also needed Joe Biden, something out of his control, to faceplant. And the stars kind of had to align because when you're this close to an election, when 50 million people have already voted, you can't just move the needle incrementally in your direction. You need a big shift in order to win. And Trump really was bet betting on the Hunter Biden story and corruption surrounding Joe Biden. That did not land. So he did not get what he needed. Uh, and overall, I think that Joe Biden actually performed better than I expected him to. So having said that, I do believe that Joe Biden is the winner of this debate, but I don't think this was a disaster for Donald Trump. So anyone in Trump circles who saw that last debate and was really bracing for another disaster, thankfully for him, he didn't have that impact. I don't think anyways. Now, I haven't seen any focus groups um, or polls yet, so who knows? But I think that Joe Biden won in what is for the most part, a normal debate. Now, the reason why I say that Joe Biden won is because I think that Joe Biden did a better job this time. Like, the reason why I said that Joe Biden won the last debate is because I think it was mostly because Donald Trump lost. I didn't think that Joe Biden had a good performance in that first debate. This time, I do think that Joe Biden had a good performance. He had a commanding performance. And anything that Trump tried to throw at him Joe Biden actually was pretty effective at flipping it and putting Trump on the defensive, which is exactly what you want to do during these debates. Now, I'm not willing to say that Joe Biden's performance was as commanding as it was in that last debate between him and Bernie Sanders, because I think that was probably his best performance since, you know, the Paul Ryan debate or the Sarah Palin debate. Uh, but this was a really good performance. He actually, as I stated, he did better than I thought he would do. And really, all he needed to do was maintain. He didn't have to win. He just had to basically tie at a minimum, and he'd be smooth sailing. You're not going to change the trajectory at this point in time. But he did a good job. There were some lowlights for Joe Biden, of course. Uh, him hitting Trump from the right on North Korea, that isn't going to land in the way that he thinks it's going to land. I mean, accusing Donald Trump of legitimizing North Korea when they're already a sovereign country, that's not going to persuade anyone. So that wasn't a great moment. You know, him saying, uh, I rule out a ban on fracking wasn't a good moment. And when it came to healthcare, he didn't do especially bad. It's just that Donald Trump did a lot worse. And in some ways, Trump didn't realize it, but he kind of made a case for Joe Biden inadvertently, right? Because when you accuse someone of wanting socialized health care. When you accuse Joe Biden of being to the left of an issue when actually he's not to the left on health care, you're helping Joe Biden in a way. Because Joe Biden, um, people voted for him, if you remember, if you look at exit polls in the Democratic Party primary because they thought he was more electable. But still, even though they voted for Joe Biden, they overwhelmingly support Medicare for all. So by Trump saying, oh, he supports what Bernie supports, you're helping him. You're getting 
some of those holdouts who didn't want to support Joe Biden because healthcare is their number one issue to jump on board if they don't know any better, right? So on healthcare, even where Joe Biden didn't excel, Trump kind of made the case for him. And Joe Biden, there were two moments where I think that he shined. And this is why I say he had a commanding performance. The first is climate change. So putting aside fracking, because he face planted on fracking, there were two moments on climate change that shocked me. I did not expect Joe Biden to say what he said on a national debate stage. It's very uncharacteristic of Joe Biden because oftentimes he tries to, you know, pander to the middle. He tries to court Republicans. But what he said on climate change was genuinely impressive. Not only did he sound like a grown up and, you know, when juxtaposed with Donald Trump, who sounds like a blubbering buffoon on climate change, who talks about crystal clean water, uh, Joe Biden out of the gate was swinging. You know, he says it's an existential threat. On top of that, um, you know, he talked about how climate change is an issue where we are running out of time on it. Now, that's just rhetoric, right? Optically, it looks good. But on a debate stage, when you're comparing that with Donald Trump, you look really great. But what shocked me the most is when Joe Biden said not only that he wants to phase out fossil fuels, not fast enough, but the fact that he said that and said that he wants to end subsidies for the oil, oil and gas industry, at that point, I would actually bet that he got a lot more young people to come out and support for, and vote for him just based on that alone. Now, it's funny because if you watch Donald Trump's face, it seemed like that was the biggest scandal ever. Like he felt like, oh, there it is. I just got him. I just won this election. No, because Donald Trump, he's too far in his right wing bubble. That plays really well with his base, but not everyone is right wingers. A majority of the country believes that climate change is a serious issue that needs to be addressed. So when you have Joe Biden not just say that climate change is real, but then say, I actually want to end subsidies to the fossil fuel industry, which is what the left has been wanting, I think he won over some new voters there. Now, whether you believe him or not is a different story, but the fact that he said it on a national debate stage is impressive. He said what he needed to say. That was good. Um, additionally, when it comes to uh, the minimum wage... When this came up, I, I was bracing myself because, you know, out of the gate, there was this right wing framing and Donald Trump made it seem as if anyone who supports a minimum wage is so unreasonable. And just, you know, with the way that Mike Pence and Donald Trump are able to get Democrats to think that fracking is bad when uh, or fracking, a ban on fracking is bad when it's not, I was afraid that Biden would fall into the trap that Donald Trump set for him. Sorry. But he did not. Not only did Joe Biden say, I support a minimum wage, but he actually rebutted the misinformation that Donald Trump was espousing about the minimum wage. It's not true that it hurts small businesses and economies. Where it has been done, it has benefited small businesses. When people have more purchasing power, they give more money to small businesses. So one thing that worried me about Joe Biden is, he always claimed that he supports a $15 minimum wage, which is good because Hillary only supported a $12 minimum wage. And at this point, we've been fighting for a minimum wage of $15 for so long. We need to talk about a $25 an hour minimum wage or a $30 an hour minimum wage. So if he would commit to a $15 minimum wage, you know, my goal would be to hear him talk about it if he's serious about it. And on a national debate stage, he did. Uh, I, I have to tell you, just based on how many minimum wage workers around this country that I know, just personally in my own social circle, like my nieces and nephews who work fast food, who can barely survive, can barely pay the rent, can't rent an apartment uh, unless you have multiple roommates. Just that benefit of getting a $15 an hour minimum wage, that is life-changing. It's not gonna solve all of the issues that we have with our economy, but it will immediately make a material impact on people's lives in a very concrete way. The fact that Joe Biden on that debate stage did not back down, I think like that's that's going to help him a lot. Because at this late stage, if it comes down to a really close vote in those swing states, you want everyone on board, as much people as you can. So, you know, it's relatively close in Pennsylvania. It's pretty close in Florida. So you really, really need to get every single holdout on board. And what Joe Biden did was, I think, try to sweep up some of those people who were still on the fence. I mean, they definitely were going to support Trump, but they were leaning towards Biden, but he's not super progressive. Maybe they wanted Bernie Sanders. Biden got some of those people tonight. 
I have no doubt about that because he had a, a really good performance there. Now, there were a couple of moments where I think that Donald Trump actually did do a good job at putting Joe Biden on the defensive. Uh, the first is the crime bill. He did good at first. The problem is that he brings up the crime bill and he doesn't necessarily explain why Joe Biden and his crime bill is problematic, what specifically it did. He did better tonight than he, than he did at that last debate. Uh, but, you know, what Trump does is he'll say, oh, well, you supported the crime bill. And then he'll pivot to, oh, and you also said super predator. Joe Biden did not say super predator. Hillary Clinton said super predator. But even if he did say super predator, uh, if you're talking about the crime bill, you have to explain to the American people how that impacted them, especially black and brown communities. But the problem with this is for the entirety of this election, Trump has been trying to convince people that Joe Biden is weak on crime. He's not tough on crime. He won't even say the words law and order. But all of a sudden at this debate, we have this last minute pivot to where you're saying you were too cr tough on crime. We have actually freed nonviolent drug offenders. Um, and that could have landed if Joe Biden didn't come prepared to respond. Fortunately for him, he had a pretty good response. Now, him admitting that, you know, some of his old policies was a mistake, I don't know how that's going to land, but showing some humility is an important first step. But, you know, when, when Trump said, we freed nonviolent drug offenders, Joe Biden says, well, you freed 20. We freed thousands, literally. That's pretty persuasive. When Joe Biden says, I no longer want to lock up nonviolent drug offenders. I want to require treatment. That's pretty, pretty persuasive. So there's no doubt about it. Trump is right that Joe Biden caused damage, real harm to communities of color with the crime bill. But in a way, by bringing this up, Trump didn't push him enough to hurt Joe Biden. And if anything, Trump got Joe Biden to explain himself in a way that he hasn't really explained himself before. Don't think that's going to land. I think it's going to end up helping Joe Biden as odd as that may be, because throughout the course of this entire race, I was expecting Trump to run to the left of Joe Biden when it comes to um, criminal justice, but he hasn't. He's been going off about law and order for most of, of the election. And all of a sudden, when you're trying to make this last minute pivot, you've got to hope that your opponent isn't prepared. Joe Biden was prepared. It didn't land. Now, initially, you know, I said, I don't think that Trump did damage. I don't think he turned a lot of people off like he did at that last debate because his demeanor, his behavior was just, it was insufferable. It made it really hard to watch the debate. A lot of people couldn't couldn't take it. Having said that, though, he still may have turned a lot of people off, even if he wasn't as abrasive and obnoxious as uh, that last debate. So I say that because, he, you know, during the immigration portion, uh, I think he did get in a good shot at Joe Biden. When Joe Biden talked about family separation, he said, look, you built those cages. You built those cages. But you're not trying to answer for your horrendous child separation policy. So, you know, it's it's I think it's a persuasive thing to say. But at the same time, you're only tying him right there. You're admitting that you're equally terrible on this issue. And in a debate, you want to make sure that you prove that you're better than your opponent. Joe Biden had the edge. And then Trump ended up hurting himself by saying, uh, uh, I'm the least racist person in the room. Uh, but a few minutes earlier, what did he say? He made some weird comment about low IQ immigrants who would show up to their court proceedings when they wanted asylum. Um, and I think that Trump, even though he was confident in the immigration portion, what he said about people uh, with with regard to catch and release was factually incorrect. Most people do show up to their court proceedings to make the case for political asylum. Um, so he wasn't correct there, and he ended up hurting himself, showing that he still does not know how to talk about race in America, whereas Biden, he may not be perfect when it comes to what the left wants. He may not want to defund the police, but at a minimum, if you can't admit that institutional racism is a thing and speak competently about race in America for at least a minute or two, you're not going to win anyone over. Now, another moment that really did not land well for Donald Trump was when he tried to bring up the Hunter Biden thing. Uh, he just, he would not stop. Like, he really wanted this to be his gotcha moment, his October surprise that landed. Unfortunately for him, it's not persuasive. And Joe Biden ended up weaponizing that entire segment because, you know, he had 
just as much ammunition, if not more. In fact, I would argue he did have more when it comes to corruption. Because, you know, Joe Biden br brought up um, Trump paying taxes to China. You know, he could have brought up Ivanka Trump making money while she works in the White House. Um, so, you know, they could have go gone tit for tat on this. But I think that Joe Biden made the right decision to basically pivot away and say, look, nobody cares about your family or my family. They care about their family. This isn't about, the re there's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. There's a reason for it. He doesn't want to talk about the, the, su the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your family's hurting badly. If you're making less than, if you're a middle class family, you're getting hurt badly right now. You're sitting at the kitchen table this morning deciding, well, we can't get new tires, they're bald because we have to wait another month or so. Or are we going to be able to pay the mortgage? Or who's going to tell her she can't go back to, to community college? They're the decisions you're making in the middle class families like I grew up in Scranton and Claymont. They're in trouble. We should be talking about your families, but that's the last thing he wants to talk about. That's going to land. That is going to land. Um, now, as I expected, the worst part of the debate for Donald Trump was COVID-19, which took place at the beginning when most people will be watching. And whenever Trump is asked about COVID-19 and his response to COVID-19, uh, you can you can basically predict exactly what he's going to say every time. China. I, uh, I did the travel ban to China. You called it xenophobic. You didn't support it. Again. You keep saying this, and you're not persuading any more people, so you've got to change it up. Got to change it up. And furthermore, uh, I wish Joe Biden would say, yeah, but I didn't support the ban to China because I wasn't privy to the information that you were privy to. You admitted to Bob Woodward that this was way more serious than the flu. It was airborne. None of us knew that. So, of course, we were saying that, you know, um, a China ban was a little bit of an overreaction and that you're just being your usual xenophobic self. If he said that, I think it would have landed more. But honestly, I think that Joe Biden's strategy of just letting Trump uh, have enough rope to hang himself, that's all you need. Uh, Trump also, it's honestly astonishing that he keeps bringing this up. He brought up swine flu, H1N1. All you do when you bring up swine flu is you remind people that the last administration that Joe Biden was part of is much more competent at handling contagious viruses. So for him to continuously bring this up, whoever is advising him, uh, or maybe they're advising against this and he's just not listening, it's honestly shocking that he brings this up. You don't bring up a strength of your opponent and pretend as if it's a weakness. Because there has to be at least some way that you can gaslight the American people around this issue and get them to think that Joe Biden and Obama handled H1N1 poorly. But we can all remember. I don't remember a shutdown during H1N1, swine flu. I was in college at the time. Didn't have to uh, stay home from school. I don't remember uh, being worried that a family member would die because it wasn't as lethal. Uh, you just remind us that our lives weren't as uprooted as it is now during COVID-19. You remind us that, hey, maybe that guy should be in charge if he handled that. Shocking. Uh, the weirdest thing he said, though, was uh, he said that the vaccine's coming soon, in weeks, I don't know about that. I think that the timeline of late mid 2021 is probably more more accurate in terms of at least when it's going to be widely available. But he says that the military is going to be distributing the vaccine. What does that look like? How how is that going to persuade us? Are they going to like fly the vaccine in to every single city? Like what is why why should I be convinced? that the military delivering the vaccine to people is going to be like the thing that makes a difference. Really what we're worrying about is like manufacturing. So are you saying that like the military is going to maybe manufacture the vaccine? Are we going to teach them how to do You have to explain yourself because it sounds all right at first until you just think a little bit about it. And it's not like this new thing that's going to persuade anyone. You're just going to raise more questions. So overall, to put a bow on this entire package um, and close out my debate coverage of the 2020 election cycle, I think that this last debate probably isn't going to be enough to move the needle. Uh, I don't think Trump did as much damage. Uh, I, I don't think he hurt himself more than he usually does. I'll, we'll put it that way. This wasn't the last debate. Having said that, though, he needed a big victory. He didn't get that, in my opinion.
Now, this is subjective, so you can argue that maybe he did enough to maybe start to shift it. But even if you make that case, did he shift it in a way where it's going to move fast enough before November 3rd? That's what you've got to pay attention to and focus on, uh, because the numbers aren't looking good for Donald Trump. Now, yeah, it is it is true that, you know, the polls are much closer in swing states, but still, you need to do a lot to turn it around. And I don't think that Donald Trump did that. And even putting that aside, like examining this debate in a vacuum, who won? Just putting aside like who needed to win, who won? I do think it was Joe Biden because Joe Biden finally gave the left what they've been needing. Some tangibles, some concessions, reaffirming his support for the $15 an hour minimum wage. I think Joe Biden won this. He won this debate. And I just don't think that Donald Trump did enough to move that needle. Either way, I think that the influence of this debate overall on the race, I don't think it's going to be that big because I think that most people at this point in time have already made up their minds. There's far less undecided voters in 2020 than there were in 2016, but we'll have to wait and see. This election is not over yet. Uh, you know, it's it's not a foregone conclusion that Joe Biden will win. But in terms of did Trump help himself in this debate? I don't think he did. I think Joe Biden helped himself more than Trump helped himself. And I think that Joe Biden did a better job at defending himself and keeping Trump on the offensive for the majority of the night. And for that, I think Joe Biden did a good job. So, yeah, I'd love to know what you think.